like to call to order and welcome everybody to the Wednesday, January 15th, meet the regular town council meeting. Would everybody stand with me and pledge of allegiance, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Roll call. Councilor Holbrook? Here. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Chairman Sullivan? Here. Okay, first of all, we'll uh, start off with uh, general public comments. You have three minutes to get up to the mic. Uh, your name and address, please. Can you hear me? My name is Anne Marie Swenson. I live on Goldenwood Drive and I'm a supporter of the dogs group and I and a few others drafted a letter um, that, to the council which I'd like to read here tonight and I want to let you know that we circulated it just for the last 24 hours and only via email. No going out looking for signatures, no phone tree, nothing like that and I've collected 121 signatures in just the last 24 hours. We'd like you to know that we're here, we're watching and we just want to make sure that the ad hoc committee process is fair and unbiased and for the record, I'd, write, I'd like to read the letter. It says, we strongly encourage the Scarborough Town Council and the ad hoc committee assigned to review the issue of dogs on Scarborough beaches to slow down, take time to review all pertinent data, and make a thoughtful, fair recommendation for the future use of the town's beaches. In October, the council made dramatic changes to the current Scarborough leash law based on a rush decision. That prompted a special election in which almost 4,000 Scarborough residents voted 73 to 27 percent to overturn the council's decision. The day after the election, the council voted to start addressing the issue again. We're wondering when does the will of the people become the will of the people. Based on post-election events, the will of Scarborough residents is not being respected. There is room for adjustment and further compromise. However, that is not what we are getting. Instead, it feels like the same rushed process. The ad hoc committee is not comprised of the unbiased membership necessary to analyze data and make a truly objective recommendation to the council. The committee was selected in a manner such that any vote is likely to end in a 4-3 or 5-2 decision with an anti-dog bias. While it is widely acknowledged that a piping plover was killed in July 2013 by a dog, dogs rank very close to the bottom of known cases of piper cloving mortality, known causes, I'm sorry. In our state's 32-year recorded history, dog takes represent less than 1% of piping plover mortality. There is no evidence that further restrictions on dogs will help the plovers, none. The current effort is most definitely an excuse to target dogs, not to protect the plovers. Our town is not a wildlife sanctuary. We all do the best we can, but we should do so in the context of understanding balance among all in the community. We implore the council not to repeat prior mistakes. Review the composition of the ad hoc committee vetted only by certain members of the council. Another special election to overturn a rushed, biased decision is not in anyone's best interest. Education and enforcement should be the focus. Scarborough is not a town to be dominated by plovers, dogs, or any special group. Scarborough is to be enjoyed by all. Do what is right. Share Scarborough. And Tody, I'll give you a copy of this. We know these signatures are nothing formal. They're not binding, but there are 121 concerned citizens that have signed this letter, again, just in the last 24 hours. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane, Scarborough. Uh, we are all human and we all make mistakes, uh, but I believe that it's how you handle yourself in those moments that speak most to your character. In my world, you own it, you apologize, and then you try really hard not to make the same mistake again. Inevitably, inevitably you fail. Why? Because you are human. Uh, so you pick yourself up and you try again. Last week I sent an email and asked some very tough questions of the council. Four out of seven of you responded and I thank you for those replies. I eagerly await to hear from the last three. At times I don't always ask the right question or remember to request a, a reply. Uh, so here they are again and I am requesting a reply. Number one, do the members of this council believe that the selection of the ad hoc animal control advisory committee was unbiased and fair? 
Number two, were you personally afforded the opportunity to provide input as to who should and who should not be on the committee? Surprisingly, I was asked and privileged to be asked to give some names. Sadly, 11 of those names were denied. I want to know why. Number three, should counselors be privately meeting with committee members? Once, twice maybe, but not eight times. Number four, why shouldn't I be allowed to communicate with Maine Audubon or to CC the town council on my correspondence with the committee? Number five, why should the committee consider the vote of the special election? The voters consist of close to 4,000 citizens who are our friends, our neighbors, and our family. I don't know how to consider them. Or how, I mean, I don't know how not to consider them. There are really good people on this ad hoc committee, people who believe every bit as passionately about their position as I do mine. The difference is that their position is only looking at one single aspect, it's the protection of the plovers. Mine considers all users of the beach. Was the council's intent for this committee to create a policy to manage our beaches the same as a wildlife sanctuary? That was not my understanding. We are destined towards a 4-3 or 5-2 vote. We were from day one and it's not the committee's fault. The truth is we never should have been put in this position in the first place. If you wanted the town to vote on the elimination of off leash showers in the summer, then you should call another special election. In my opinion, what you're doing is unfair and unethical. I am frustrated with continued attempts to evaluate and assess the meaning of the vote. Our message was clear, restore the balanced leash law, the law that we had. It wasn't restore the winter hours and then take away the summer at a later time. If someone voted no because they were told or believed that they could come back and eliminate the summer off-leash hours, then shame on them. They should have voted yes. They have the same access to the democratic process that we did. Let them go out and gather 2,400 signatures in 20 days. Let them go out and get 4,000 people to the polls for a special election. That's called democracy. We have an opportunity to correct our mistakes. Why wouldn't we do that? And I'll give you a copy of the questions. <coughs> Anyone else? Good. Good evening. My name is Bud Hansen. I live in a condo at uh, 22 Stony Creek Drive. And my birthday is uh, March 4th, 1930. And I tell you that because I'm also the senior advisor for the senior board here in Scarborough. We have a great time. And I wanted to tell you about a workshop we had last August. And we were debating at the workshop, how are we going to get more members in the senior group, in the program? We were discussing advertising, we were touching new plans and so forth. And our liaison, a man named Ed Blaze was there. And Ed came up and said, how many members do you have today? We said, we have 360. He said, well, why don't you set an objective of how many members you want to have by the end of year 2013? I said, what a nice idea that is. So he said, well, how about maybe 150, I mean 450 or 475? So we said, no, we'll go for 500. <laughs> so at the end of December of this year, we had 489 paid members, wow. which is 97.8% of the objective. And thank you, Ed. Thank you. And so what we're going to do is give you a special title at the senior <laughs> program. You're going to be Vice President of Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, and we appreciate what you do. Uh, it's, um, you will probably receive in the mail, if not already received them, the new um, 55 program. It's, it's out in the mail to all those members, and it's available to and all, all the town council members will get a copy of it in your mailbox anyway. It is you will find some new things that we're trying out. It's going to be very exciting. And I want to tell you that on chapter 13, on page 13 and 14, it tells you all our discounts and how to register to become a member. It doesn't cost more than 10 bucks. It's pretty easy to last all year long. Um, I want to thank publicly um, my coordinator in town here, who is Hallie Hodge, who puts this together and makes all the arrangements and talks to people and gets the programs going. We get some good programs going, and we are going to go off of the programs at the uh, Phelps Swimming Arena down in Saco, which is a great program for especially us seniors who enjoy swimming very much. Uh, my last thoughts were uh, later on 
this year, in the spring, you will be going down to the Veterans Home for, for town council meeting. And for those members who have never been there before, I'm thinking maybe uh, uh, Mr. Donovan and Kunday, if you haven't been in the, the, the Veterans Home, give me a call. I'll take you a pre walk around. Okay. My father was at the Veterans Home. Oh, he was. Okay. So you know what it is. Yes. Uh, we were doing probably the same thing as we did back in November of 2012 with tours, uh, the meeting, and special guests will be there as well. And I invite you all to come and we'll be meeting with Toadie. And uh, by contact there is uh, Joanne Hooper, who was the uh, administrative, you probably know, administrative okay. supervisor there with uh, the director who is uh, Maureen. I wish you all good luck. Thank you for your time. Please come and join us. If you want to take a tour, any of you, they have gone from being a very friendly place to a very friendly family place. Mm -hmm. You won't recognize it today. Wooden floors, separate dining rooms for all the divisions. It's very, very homey there now. And I like it. I am a veteran, and I'm old, and I really appreciate it. And I hope you don't have to go there one day, but that's why we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, that's the end of the public hearing, meeting, um, public comment. Um, approval of minutes of December 18th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Nay. Opposed? Okay. Um, items to be signed, uh, treasurer warrants. I'll be signing them during the meeting. Um, oh, I'm sorry, adjustments to the agenda. Do we have it? Yes, um, Mr. Chair, I would like to add Resolution 1401, which is urging the Maine State Legislature to preserve and restore municipal revenue sharing. And we will take that up uh, under Item 8 <coughs> after the update from the Wentworth Building Committee. Okay, any others? Uh, I'd like to propose that we take up Order Number 1407, which uh, requests an extension of the ad hoc committee's, uh, animal control ad hoc committee's work to the 29th of January. Okay, and that will go right after. That will follow, uh, it will be the final order you consider this evening. Final order. 1407. <coughs> okay, um, non-action items, we have one. Update from Wentworth School Building Committee, Paul. Well, good evening. My name is Paul Kozell. I reside at Four Lillian Way here in Scarborough. I'm a dad. I have two children, uh, a seven-year-old in first grade, a 12-year-old in the seventh grade, and I chair the Wentworth uh, Intermediate School Building Committee. Uh, it's always a tough act following Bud Hanson after he speaks, So, uh, <laughs> but the good news is Bud serves on the committee with me, so uh, uh, we've worked together before. Overall, my goal tonight is to, is to give the council an update as to where we are on the, on the project and then to answer any questions that folks may have. Uh, to be frank, I only have good news to talk about. Uh, the project is moving along well. Uh, the project is 70% 70, 70 complete at this point in time. The project is on time and on schedule, uh, and the project is on budget. As far as the project itself is concerned, uh, we are just over a year at this point as far as construction is concerned. We started in the fall. Uh, we have approximately 300 work days uh, into the project. Uh, on a daily basis, we have about 80 workers on site, um, which is a, is a very large number. Uh, to date, there have only been 10, 10 change orders as far as the project is concerned. The building at present time is uh, enclosed and generating its own temporary heat. Uh, some classrooms and nearby bathrooms on the Quentin Drive side of the school are nearly complete. Uh, we've selected an artist for the school signature piece. The geothermal system, which was a big uh, budget item, is currently installed but not fully hooked up. And site work continues. We've had some inclement weather over the past few weeks, but fortunately with the holidays it hasn't impacted the project. It's been more an issue of snow removal than anything. Uh, so overall, the project is moving along fine. Our contingency budget uh, was established at about $2 million uh, back at the time of the project. I'm happy to report uh, that we've used just a little over half uh, of that to date, uh, which represents about 4.25% of our total construction budget and just a little over 3% of our project budget. 
this is a good indicator for us being 75% complete um, that we're just not in trouble. It's running fine. Until just before the holidays, we had two large ticket items still uh, unresolved. The first one concerned the furnishings. And when we put our bid together, put our budget together, uh, this was essentially a placeholder. Uh, there was no significant detail given to that. A map would report as far as furnishings are concerned. Um, our budget with real furniture in there has come just in under budget. Uh, we now have that out to bid, and we expect that to be fine. As far as our technology is concerned, anything from computers to phones to security systems, we had a million dollars budget for that. The hard numbers are coming in, and that looks to be coming in under budget. So that, to me, was sort of the last remaining piece of the project that had not really been touched, and uh, it has now been touched, and, and I feel very comfortable about it. As with any construction project, not everything runs as smoothly as you would like it to. Uh, we have had one large issue present itself, um, and this concerned uh, the technology and the infrastructure. We had a very qualified technology subcommittee as far as our project is concerned. They did a phenomenal job. Um, in most school projects, again, this just becomes a line item that becomes a percentage of the project. This group of volunteers really delved right into it and came up with a very comprehensive list of what we need in the new school. Regrettably, there was a disconnect between this subcommittee and the architect, and, and $400,000 worth of infrastructure uh, was missed uh, as far as being part of the building construction part of the project. That has now been addressed. That is now within that contingency money that I've talked to you about. So despite having that $400,000 hit, that is still keeping our contingency just at about 50%. So again, you know, things are, are running well under the project. I think if we look at other school projects around the state, there are always issues of steel not matching up, concrete issues and things of that. None of that has taken place on this project. As far as schedule, from day one we talked about having kids in there for the fall of 2014. That is on track. Uh, we expect it substantial completion uh, uh, this summer. Uh, we expect the move uh, into the new school uh, to take place at that point in time. That, of course, is going to be a coordination effort, uh, but nonetheless, we're going to get it done. And the coordination for this has already begun. Uh, we've done certain things over the last couple of summers as far as addressing the asbestos in the, the school, getting that out so that when it comes time for the demolition this summer, it's one less thing to take place. Uh, Mrs. Dexter has been working with staff uh, of tossing and cleaning uh, in anticipation of this move so that when it comes time to move, not only uh, so that we're only addressing the moving, we're not worrying about the cleaning as well. Uh, the other part uh, of the coordination uh, is, is just getting everything ready. We've selected a moving company to assist with this, uh, and, and we're just going to be ready. The last part of uh, my comments I want to make tonight is about our team overall. Uh, I've been in construction now for a little over 10 years. I've been a practicing attorney for over 25 years, and, and I really have to take my hat off to the construction team that we have here. Um, they are top shelf. Uh, the contractor is a main contractor. Uh, this is, I was explaining to Bud Hansen about this earlier, this is the largest project that he has ever done. This is his flagship project. And I will tell you, there are no issues. You walk on that project site, there is no trash. Uh, subcontractors are kept on a tight rein. Just a stellar job. Our, our architect, I had mentioned 10 change orders. The reason we only have 10 change orders is because the plans are tight. Our owner's representative have done a great job, and our other consultants have done a great job. But more importantly, um, I have to take my hat off to some of our own people. Uh, the school's facility manager, Todd Jepson, has been on that project every single day. Um, no better place for him to be since ultimately that school will be, and its operations will be his responsibility. He understands where all the parts and pieces lie. Uh, Mrs. Dexter has done a great job coordinating her staff as far as getting ready, them ready for the move, working with the children on, on the smaller playground. And then, and then Mrs. Sizemore has done an outstanding job as far as being involved with this project, handling a lot of the administration associated with it. So, Overall, I take my hat off to all these folks. Um, without them, this project would not be the success it's been today. Um, as I said, there's only good news to report about this project, and I don't really want to say much more because I don't want to jinx it. 
because uh, we are at 70%. But assuming things go forward and continue the way they are, we should have a, a great school open for the kids come fall of next year. Those are my comments. I'm happy to answer any questions from the council that people may have. Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to say I was lucky enough, I think it was early fall, to go on a tour of the building. Um, and I, I can only reiterate everything that you just said. It was a, I've been on numerous construction sites, and it was spotless. Um, they are clearly running a tight ship over there, and the building itself is beautiful. It's something to be extremely proud of. And um, your team, like you said, it, I can't say enough good things about it. It was just it's, we're lucky to have access to a school like that. Our kids are going to be very lucky to go to school there. Um, and I just want to say that I, I'm imp very impressed with what you guys pulled off. And um, talk about a team that was <laughs> from the from how hard you guys have worked to pull that school together from the beginning is just um, impressive. So I just want to say great job and um, it's beautiful and I can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you. I had one question, just to make sure I'm clear, and perhaps others have the same question. You mentioned that $400,000 issue that's been dealt with, and you, you characterize it as infrastructure, but also in the context of technology. That is more cabling and all the stuff behind the scenes to support the, the technology. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. The, the disconnect on this, when, when the technology group sat down and, and, and they, they said infrastructure, they, when they say infrastructure, they mean servers, and they mean, and, and they mean things that, that can be moved out of the building. When the architect and the contractor say infrastructure, they mean things in the walls that when you move out, it stays behind. So it was, uh, frankly, just a misinterpretation as to the definition of infrastructure. Um, again, it was a misstep. Yeah. So that's, that's where the, the issue lies. The, the upside of the whole thing is, you know, we found it out, we've addressed it, and number two, it, it's it's not a case of something happening that we paid for and didn't get. It just was never in the project uh, at, to begin with. So Absolutely. we found it and have addressed it. And frankly, that represents, you know, that $376,000 represents 40% of the contingency expenditure. And again, that's why I say that I think the project's in good shape because there just hasn't been a lot of problems. Just a final question, if I could. Um, I was pleased to hear from Todd Jepson, the facilities director, that um, some of the items of the old Wentworth School will be salvaged and used in other school facilities, some of the K-2 schools. Uh, yes. Lighting comes to mind in particular, because I know we did some really good uh, lighting upgrades. Those fixtures are still, all still very usable. Do you have a salvage contractor that's going to take the rest, or how is it going to work before demolition occurs? Because I, I have had local businesses inquire whether there's any Items. I'd hate to see things landfilled that could have a, a productive, useful life somewhere else if we don't have a, a use for them. I don't have the specific information, but what I remember from the spec is that we would have identified items that we would have pulled out of the school to save. Um, and then what happens is when the project goes out to bid, the site contractor or who then isn't responsible for the demolition then has a demolition contractor come in and, and they take all that stuff. Do they landfill it, or do they, is there some productive use for it, uh, depending on what the item is? Uh, there's probably a productive use for the salvage contractor that they will, will, will do something as far as selling it. Um, uh, but as far as a benefit for, to the town or, or to some of the businesses, we can't explore that. I don't remember the specifics of what was identified. But, for example, we have talked, you know, with some of the older furniture, you know, potentially donating that. Um, some of that is, in fact, going to be moved up to the new school. So, you know, some of the, the tables, not the desks, um, some of the carts, some of the more recent purchases. But we can explore that further with you. Yeah, I was thinking more, the questions that have come to me have to do more with the high-efficiency lighting uh, that, mm -hmm. that was put into that school two or three or four years ago that I think still is, is productive. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. I'll, I'll check with Todd later. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next will be one of the adjustments to the agenda. I'll have. Ready? 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 Oh, I was going to have uh, Councilor Katrina read it. Okay. Um, resolution. Yeah, Resolution 1401 urging the Maine State Legislature to preserve and restore municipal revenue sharing. 
be it resolved by the town council of the town of Scarborough, Maine, in town council assembled, that whereas for over 40 years the state of Maine has reserved approximately 5% of sales tax receipts from retail sales in Maine's towns and cities to stabilize the property tax burden and support the local governmental services provided on behalf of the state by municipalities, which under the law are subdivisions of state government, the municipal sharing, excuse me, the municipal revenue sharing program, and whereas for fiscal year 2014, Governor LePage proposed a state budget that would have eliminated the municipal revenue sharing program and misappropriated all of the sales tax receipts in the municipal revenue sharing program's local government fund for the state government's use, and whereas, <coughs> excuse me, the compromise state budget adopted by the Maine State Legislature preserved the municipal revenue sharing program, but nonetheless reallocated to the state treasury tens of millions of dollars previously designated for, munici for municipalities under 30A Maine Revised Statutes Section 568, and whereas the state's last minute cuts to the municipal revenue sharing program for the fiscal year 2014 and fiscal year 2015 biennial budget through municipal budgets for fiscal year 2014 into disarray, necessitating draconian budget cuts, layoffs, and tax increases in towns and cities across the state, and whereas the fiscal year 2015 component of the state's biennial budget both further reduce municipal revenue sharing for municipalities for fiscal year 2015 from its original statutory level of $146 million to $60 million and threaten to effectively eliminate the program with additional reductions of $40 million in the event the state is unable to adopt budget amendments that reduce state tax expenditures and or implement other savings by that amount, and whereas the impact to Scarborough of repeated reductions in municipal revenue sharing has been significant, with the projection for fiscal year 2015 representing only 17.7% of what it was in fiscal year 2009, a total dollar loss of $1,118,300, excuse me, $230, the majority of which directly results, resulting in increases to the regressive local property tax, and whereas the legislature's tax expenditure review task force has worked diligently between legislative sessions to address the anticipated $40 million shortfall in the state budget for fiscal year 2015, identifying state tax expenditure reductions and other savings in Legislative Resolve 2721, and whereas Legislative Resolve 2721 is now pending before the Legislature's Appropriation Committee for its consideration, and whereas the Legislature's adoption of state tax expenditure reductions or other budget savings and the preservation of the Municipal Revenue Sharing Program that such savings would accomplish are vital to Maine's towns and cities as they prepare for yet another difficult budget process. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by the town council in town council assembled as follows, that it is of critical importance that the legislature preserve the municipal revenue sharing program so as to avoid further reductions in municipal services and further increases in property taxes, and that the town council strongly endorses the efforts of the legislature's tax expenditure review task force to identify tax expenditure reductions or other state budget savings to close the $40 million gap in the state's fiscal year 2015 budget and that the Town Council calls upon the Appropriations Committee and the Legislature to adopt legislation to fully fund the $40 million fiscal year 2015 state budget gap and thereby forestall further cuts in the Municipal Revenue Sharing Program, and that the Town Council urges local legislative delegation 
to support the preservation and indeed the restoration of full funding of the, rev of the municipal revenue sharing program signed and dated this 15th day of January 2014, et cetera. Thank you, Councilor Katarina. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 1401? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Right. All opposed? It's a vote. Okay, uh, do I? Just as an aside, I believe one, perhaps the chair and, and Councilor yes. Katarina uh, may well offer testimony to the Appropriations yes. Committee okay. next week. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah, on Wednesday, um, I will be going to Augusta with um, Chair Sullivan, and we will be testifying before the Appropriations Committee on behalf of the 20,000 citizens of Scarborough, Maine. As long as it doesn't snow. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. I, I think it would be also appropriate to note that we did meet with the uh, delegation, the Scarborough legislative delegation. Uh, and made the points that were made in this resolution. Uh, and we feel very strongly, as do many other towns, that these are monies that were legislated as uh, appropriate for municipalities because municipalities have no other means other than the regressive property tax to raise revenue. And this is a combination of sales, sales and income tax so that it provides a modest amount of balance to the way in which towns have to pay their bills. And so when that money is taken away from uh, the municipalities, it puts us under tremendous pressure uh, and unpredictability in our budgets. And we're committed to uh, making an effort to uh, protect the citizens of the town and the manner in which uh, we've had very unstable revenue streams in recent years. Thank you. Yeah, the last year was very, very unpredictable. Um, we weren't sure where we were going because of the holdup of the state. Um, is there another counselor that would like to comment? Yes, uh, just my comment I'll is um, I would hope and wish that the state could kind of pull their act together a little bit. We keep getting slammed as a community on both ends. We lose our money in our revenue sharing. We lose our money over in our schools. And 99% of your tax increase in the four years I have been here is due to making up those shortfalls. Um, so as this continues, this is something, you know, we need to be watching carefully. And I certainly applaud and thank Jen Marie and, and Richard for going up there on our behalf as a community to advocate for our lack of funds. I mean, we pay these funds. That money is still being paid. Your sales taxes, all these other things is money that you're still getting to have to pay. And then we're <laughs> increasing you on the other end, too. So. Um, thank correct. you for going up. Um, of uh, seven years on this council, I've heard the legislature, our state government, promise and promise, we're going to fix the problem, we're going to fix the problem. Um, it hasn't been fixed, and it continues on. And, uh, you know, uh, Scarborough pays quite a bit into the state, and what we get back is not as anywhere as near as much. So. Um, it's time to start fighting uh, for this town and, and the mm -hmm. precious resources in funding that we deserve. And um, this is a nonpartisan issue, and it's got to be dealt with because um, we can't keep going up on property taxes like we have. Okay, let me get back on track here. Okay, I need a um, motion on Order 1397. Move approval. Could I make yes. a comment, please? Yes. Uh, this order and order 1401, at the request of the Code Enforcement Office, they would like to have these two items tabled. So there would be no public hearing held this evening. And uh, they ask that if it be tabled until the issues are uh, resolved. Mm -hmm. Can you that, would, that would be order 1397 and 1401. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes, that's correct. So, so I'd like to table. Oh, I'm sorry. Not right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. They, they table until the next meeting? Until the issues until are resolved. resolved. Until the issues are resolved. Okay. We have a motion on Order 1402. It's actually a public hearing. And public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Uh, we'll do a public hearing on the, uh, is there anyone that would like to speak on the order 1402? Um, Which license for, food handles license for Tim Hortons. Do I see anybody? Okay. <laughs> like to do I yeah, I'd like to move approval for move approval. Second. Order. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Wait a minute. I, do, I just have one question. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> this outfit's been in business for how many years? And it says in the documentation this is an initial license. It's a new. It's a new owner. owner. It's a new owner. New, owner. new management. Yes. Tim doesn't own it anymore. Huh? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been owner for a while. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. Under old business, uh, <coughs> um, order 1403. Yes. Order number 1403 is act on the names posted to the various committees and boards as recommended by the Appointments Committee on Wednesday, December 18, 2013. Uh, Would you like me to read them? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Um, and this is in a form of a motion to move William Frothingham Jr., the first alternate to a full voting member on the Board of Assessment Maru Review, with a term to expire in 2015. Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Committee posts the name of Chris Rule to be reappointed as a full voting member on the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee with a term to expire in 2016. We post the name of Art Dillon to be reappointed as a full voting member on the Community Services and Recreation Advisory Board with a term to expire in 2016. Post the name as full voting members on the Conservation Commission Chris Herrick and Peter Slavinsky as a reappointment for a full voting member with terms to expire in 2016. And the name of Sean Flaherty to be appointed as a full voting member with a term to expire in 2014. Post the name of Sandy Duraghi as a full voting member for the Energy Committee with a term to expire in 2016. Move Craig Frederick from first alternate and Becky Delaware second alternate to full voting members on the Historic Preservation Ad Hoc Advisory Committee with terms to expire in 2016. In the name of Craig Frederick and Brian Shumway for reappointment as full voting members on the Housing Alliance with terms to expire in 2016. In the names of Suzanne Foley Ferguson and Douglas Williams for reappointment as full voting members on the Parks and Conservation Land Board with terms to expire in 2016. Appoint Sean Flaherty as a full voting member with a term to expire in 2014. Terry Eddy for reappointment as full voting member on the Pest Management Advisory Committee with a term to expire in 2016. Post the name of as full voting members on the Planning Board of Ronald Mazur for reappointment as a full voting member and the term to expire in 2016. To move John DuPont from a first alternate to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2015. And move Nicholas McGee from second alternate to first alternate with a term to expire in 2016. I'd like to post the name of Susan Auglis as a second alternate with a term to expire <coughs> in 2016. <coughs> Move Brian Young from first alternate to a full voting member on the Senior Program Advisory Board with a term to expire in 2015. And post the name of Judy Roy as the Long Range Planning Representative to the Transportation Ad Hoc Committee. God bless Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion? Second. Oh, I'm was a motion. Need a second. She's made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh. Under new business, order number 1404 is act on the request to accept roundabout drive, including, for the purposes of confirmation and clarification, all portions of said roundabout drive previously accepted by the Town Council pursuant to Title 23 of the Maine Revised Statute, subsection 3025, and the requirements of Section 4 of the Scarborough Street Ordinance accept, Acceptance Ordinance, sorry, as, and as recommended by the Town Engineer. Could I just provide some yes. quick words of introduction? You were provided a memo from the town engineer who's here this evening and some other material, but in a nutshell, this is cleanup. Uh, roundabout Drive, for all intents and purposes, has been used, viewed, maintained as though it's a public road. Mm -hmm. um, through some work um, involving actually the land trust, initially it was determined that a portion anyway of, of Roundabout Drive was never formally accepted by uh, mm -hmm. this council. So this just intends to clean up that piece. 
uh, and really what it does is it paves the way for, I believe, what, what it ended up being about 2.9 acres that will be combined with the State of Maine land holding, which is the Scarborough Marsh uh, in conservation. So it's a bit of a circuitous route. It's actually a very simple and straightforward matter of street acceptance that's in front of you. Should you have questions further, Jeremy Winterstein is here from the Land Trust, uh, but that's kind of a, a side conversation. It's not really the pertinent thing before you this evening. Okay. Uh, motion on the order. Move no approval. Second. Uh, discussion. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all in favor? Sure. Thank you. Opposed? Order number 1405 is act on the request from the Shellfish Conservation Commission to approve the allocations for the licenses for 2014. Is, do we have anybody to speak on that? Or on I'm, I'm not aware. Is anyone here from the Shellfish Commission? Yeah. Do you want to hear anything? Do you need this? Or you, do you know it off the top of your head? You probably do. What's the only thing on top of my head? Just <laughs> explain the licenses. Tim Downs, 44 Jones Creek Drive. Um, I'm vice chair of the Shellfish Committee. Uh, previous meeting, we uh, decided to allocate a certain number of licenses. What we have done is we've increased the licenses for the resident commercial licenses. We went from 29 to 30. Um, on our over 60 commercial licenses, we had previously issued three of the licenses. This year, we're suggesting that we issue just one of them because there was two of the diggers that did not uh, do their conservation work and. We just figured uh, that it would be more useful to put a regular commercial license out there. There's more of a demand for that. The non-resident commercial licenses, those remain the same at four. The student commercial licenses, that remains the same at 10. The non-resident student commercial license, that remains the same as one. Um, by state statute, we're required to have 10% at least that goes to non-residents, so that's why we have the non-resident licenses in there. The resident recreational licenses that stays at 200. The non-resident recreational licenses stay at 20. And the day permits, they are 10 a day. Um, we had a lot of discussion about the numbers of the licenses. The shellfish stock out there is in a, it's decreased greatly. There's not a lot of seed out there or anything. The crabs are devastating the stock that we have. Um, all the predators, the worms, the crabs, everything. So. Um, we feel like we were really being generous as just far as issuing that one other license when actually we should have a process of attrition going in, start taking them away. The future looks pretty bleak. Um, mm. But that's where they stand and that's what we hope that you will accept and move those numbers to Augusta and do what we got to do. Thank you. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. <laughs> Been doing this 40-something years, but I don't know what no one does. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Do you have a motion? Approval. Second. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? How, um, how long has it been since these uh, fees have been reviewed? Yep. Well, the fees are part of the schedule of fees, so technically they're adopted every year with the adopted budget. Um, I don't recall specific conversation in recent years about the shellfish fees directly. I'm looking down at uh, Councillor Holbrook, who's been there at least three years. I don't, off the top of my head, recall an increase in the fee schedule, but um, I guess if I may, I would certainly respect um, former Councillor Downs, who's been a shellfish man for quite a while. Um, I would ex accept their opinion as being reasonable for what they are. I would think if they had a concern that that was perhaps not enough, um, that they would have a suggestion to, to increase that. We're, we're talking, you know, backbreaking labor for. You know, what do you get? A dollar ninety-nine a pound at best. Not enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I I just lost my page. But I mean, the fees are you know they're a couple hundred for for a license. So 
I mean, I'm certainly comfortable with it, and they're comfortable with it, but, I mean, we could, you know, have a conversation about it, but, but I am comfortable with it, so. Did you have something else you were going to add? No. Okay. Any other discussion? Anyone? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Let's vote. Just, I'm sorry, it just occurred to me, I, I hadn't had this in front of me, I, I really think the fundamental thing you did this evening was the allocation of licenses. Fees is on as part of the conversation, but I think that technically the fees are adopted when you adopt the fee schedule, so there's time for the Finance Committee. Um, I put that on just as information. I know this is the information. Have asked and these allocations actually go to the state for review, and they're the one, the ultimate approvers, but it does require a municipal step, and that's what's this evening. So the fee issue, I think, is still an open one. Mm -hmm. You're both on Finance Committee. I expect that will be an issue that comes up, and perhaps I was just, I was just curious yep. as to whether they've been reviewed by the committee. That's it. Okay, um. okay uh, order number 1406 is act on the request to approve the council goals for 2014. Hey, Tom, you want me to go through them? Yeah. Yes, the council, uh, as the council is aware, met um, in a workshop setting last mm -hmm. Wednesday and went through its annual goal setting process uh, and uh, came up with, I don't know the total number, 12 or 13 here. And so let me just go down through them. Uh, these are not listed, or am I speaking to them in order of priority? The council did not prioritize. Uh, so the first is responsible budgeting. And underneath that notion um, is created uh, conservative assumptions, kind of plan for the worst, review fees and fines. The expectation is for flat funding, uh, so same funding as this current fiscal year, and also stable tax rate. Advocate for Scarborough with the legislature and a focus on capital budgeting. Next is senior services. Uh, the notions there are partnerships and enhancing and expanding programming. Workforce housing, another initiative. Uh, business friendly permitting and a business focus overall involving town departments, SEDCO, by local, Scarborough Chamber. Adopting a whatever it takes mentality and attitude. Streamlining permitting and approval processes review of standards and requirements, and a focus on home-based businesses. Next is improved communications, both internal among council members and external using the resources that we have, our website, uh, local access TV, e-newsletter, potentially tax bill inserts. Uh, next is uh, the revised flood maps and to do our part to uh, educate residents on what's happening and what the impact is. Next would be encourage the school department to adopt an employee incentive program. Also historic preservation, uh, which would be renewing the current ad hoc committee and really putting together an action plan with the work they've done to date. Also uh, there was an idea, a goal of sharing services and privatization to gain efficiencies. There's a goal for enforcement uh, regarding zoning and building codes. A goal uh, regarding uh, an independent town-wide revaluation. A goal for ongoing dialogue with our legislative delegation. A goal to encourage com uh, committees of the council to uh, report their activities through minutes um, and really encourage transparency of, of those, uh, uh, the workings of those groups. And lastly, long-range facility planning. Yes, thank you, Tom. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Discussion. I think the one that the uh, committee really universally embraced was the need for responsible budget managing. It really uh, stood out to me, at least. Uh, <clears throat> I also thought and I had this feeling shared by a number of other people on the council that it is very difficult to set a flat expenditure budget. This, that is a pretty austere step to take. Uh, uh, I see this as a long-term project that over the next five years I hope we can maintain or achieve 
complete tax stability so that we know what our revenues are. Uh, uh, I think I went home and the next day the one thing I woke up saying was I hate the idea that this might lead to layoffs and that just killed me to think about that. Uh, but we've been put in an impossible situation as a town for years now with a reduced revenue. Uh, and as a consequence, we've been tightening our belt. And this is going to be another belt tightening year. Uh, and my hope is that we don't lose too much revenue because if we did have a flat budget uh, and we lose revenue as we expect we will, then that means we'll still deliver a tax increase uh, uh, to taxpayers. And I've heard from so many people how unacceptable that is. Uh, so uh, it's a long-term project because I don't think any of us want to undermine the departments that uh, are actually involved with the, uh, this expenditure of money. Uh, they've, uh, every time you turn around and you look as a new counselor, you can't help but be impressed by the sophistication of our various departments. It's really remarkable in our school system. Mm -hmm. So no one wants to undo what has been so meticulously developed but there is this point that we've reached where enough is enough in terms of being able to absorb tax increases. So that's a, this is a tough one. For, this was a tough one for me, but it was necessary. Mm -hmm. I think if uh, I have to back um, Bill up with a statement of it's going to be basically what are your needs and not what are your <coughs> wants. I think we're going to be basically going back to wh what do you need to get the job done, That's it's going to be basic. Any other comments? Oh, uh, I, I would just say I agree with what uh, Councillor Donovan has said. I, too, uh, after leaving that meeting, was like, wow, you know, that's, it's pretty tough as a, as a counselor to say we're going to have a flat, flat increase uh, in budgeting. Uh, because I know that that's really, really tough to do. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't lead to layoffs of personnel because as a business person myself, I know the important resource, most important resource in my business are the people uh, that I depend on. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, um, optimistic, we can work uh, with the uh, various town departments uh, t to hold the line. And in the meantime, as you noted through the introduction uh, of this uh, sentiment for the state legislature, we're going to start pushing back a little bit against with our state legislative delegation because they need to understand that what they're doing in Augusta is negatively impacting us in Scarborough. And we're, we're down to bare bones. When I did my little tour as a new counselor of the various uh, um, buildings and departments and whatever, it's, it's amazing uh, what we are able to do on the shoestring budgets that we have. And I know there are people in town who think, oh, we've got all this money, but if you would spend some time like I did and visit the various departments and, and see what people are doing and making do without, you would be amazed. <coughs> so uh, that's where I'm coming from uh, with this budget. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? To vote. Okay, uh, order, <coughs> yep, we'll order number 1407 is act on the request to extend the time frame in which the ad hoc control, <coughs> control advisory committee, which was established by resolution 1307, has to make its recommendations and report a course of action or actions to the town council from January 21st, 2014 to January 29th, 2014 at which time the committee shall cease to exist unless otherwise extended by the town council. Councilor Donovan, would you like to comment on Yes, certainly, and I'll, I'll comment a Narrative. little more. I'll give an update uh, on the ad hoc committee work uh, of when we cover our uh, committees. But uh, in terms of this, uh, we have scheduled three more meetings. Uh, we've already held, I think, four or four, four meetings so far. Uh, and uh, uh, lengthy, intense, and uh, uh, our expectation is that we will deliver a report 
uh, based upon this extension that three more meetings should allow us to get it done. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Uh, second. Second. Discussion. Yeah. Councilor Katarina first. I have uh, attended three of the four meetings. I wasn't able to make the very first organizational meeting, and I sit and I've mm -hmm. listened, and I think that um, this committee's been working very hard. Uh, I certainly appreciate the time of the volunteers in this committee, and I appreciate the time and the effort of the, the people in the dogs group um, who've also been there on a regular basis and watching and um, just being there. Um, and as a result, I think that it makes sense to extend the time. I know I originally voted with uh, Councillor St. Clair when she uh, thought we should have a little bit more time. Um, as long as they're doing the work, I'm willing to give them the time. Um, Councillor Holbrook. Uh, and again, you know, I echo uh, Jim Marie's thought. I, supported giving a little more time and going into February. Um, I was just curious as to, um, we're going from January 21st to, oh, I read it wrong, so mm. never mind, that's why. I was wondering why we wouldn't give the extra week or so for the first meeting in February. But um, my question, my only question is, is um, you're really only extending it by about a week. Um, are you? fairly confident with that time frame or my, my question is because our original thought when we moved to move it the last time was to allow enough time to go into the second meeting in February from the council so mm -hmm. right. rather than coming back again and maybe asking for another stint maybe we should you know, just give you the extra two weeks to begin with exactly uh, we're uh, I'm very confident that we'll we will complete our work uh, with three more meetings uh, and that uh, we've made some uh, good progress and so because uh, uh, the committee has put in such an intense effort we are well along on the curve of progress so I think that's it's quite a satisfactory schedule uh, I like just have to um, echo Councillor Holbrook I have concerns I had concerns about it um, in the beginning that I was worried that we were trying to fit too much too much work into a, a short amount of time uh, I still think that um, my hope all along has been to get an entire full package um, when this comes back I think everybody wants to see this I don't, I'm not sure wrapped up is the correct terminology of it because um, I think it's going to, my personal view is that it's going to be an ongoing situation. Um, but I would like to see it wrapped up and presented all in one um, bundle. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I've attended a couple of the ad hoc committee meetings. I'm impressed with the amount of work that these people have done. I don't think anybody until you're really in it, I don't think people realize how much work there is to it. There's a lot of pieces that have to fit together, um, and there's a lot of different views on it. And I, I, I know I've said this a couple of times, I'm impressed with the entire committee, I'm impressed with Tom. Um, none of them have an easy job. Um, I, I don't think, again, I don't think any of us realized how, um, the, how much there was going to go into this. Um, but I am still concerned that we're rushing um, but I'm going to um, have faith that Councillor Donovan who's the who is the one out of all of us that is um, knee-deep in this um, if he thinks that they can complete the package by then um, then there's not really much more for me to do uh, Sorry, I'm just still struggling with that. But anyway, um, if you think, Councillor Donovan, that we can do it, then I say that we should probably move forward with that date. And then I'm vo I would like to vocally say that if there ne if you need more time, 
then you 100% would have my support on that. I don't want to see this rush. I don't want to make that mistake again. It, I mean, it's an intense subject. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, and people are putting in, in and dedicating a tremendous amount of time yeah. to uh, studying it. Yeah. And I think there's there there comes a limit yeah. for uh, committee members. Uh, yeah. Uh, which, yeah. Uh, while, you know, nothing certain in life, we could have snowstorms that would wipe <laughs> out any of these three meetings. But the expectation is we are going to make uh, progress towards completing the task. And just for, just so that maybe people at home that are trying to kind of follow this whole process, can you just briefly <coughs> like maybe describe what you're going to come back with as an answer? Not, not a, not, I don't want to know what, where you are. I just want people to understand what section of this you're working on right now. Does that make sense? Because you sure, know how it's sort sure. of like now, two me, different. It's two uh, different topics. Uh, yeah, let me let me outline uh, where we are. <clears throat> uh, the, for the last several meetings, we've been uh, working on uh, what sort of uh, ordinance amendment would be appropriate for uh, plover protection. Uh, and this is the really the summer season in, in season, uh, uh, April through uh, September 1st. Uh, of uh, the year at the beach, at these three beaches that are the public beaches that we're, we're addressing. So that's been uh, a very intense subject of discussion and analysis. Uh, uh, we spent a lot of time in preparation to discuss it, literally uh, dozens of hours by people reading the materials. We, Mr. Hall uh, set up a structure whereby all of the materials that were relevant were being submitted as rapidly as possible in December. <clears throat> that way, they were all copied and made available to people, uh, put online, uh, and as a consequence, people came to the meetings uh, on January 6th, 9th, and 13th to roll up their sleeves, prepared to work. Uh, they were already well informed on the issues. The people on the committee are already well informed. These are highly capable people. Uh, and so as a consequence, uh, uh, a lot of the work is done between the meetings. When, when, when people are doing analysis and studying and uh, back and forth sharing information that's relevant, testing ideas uh, 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 against uh, uh, what is good practice here. So a lot of work has been put in. Uh, we are now, I think, nearing the end of the review of the plover process, and we will be moving to what are the rules that should be appropriate for the off-season, the, the late fall, uh, the uh, winter, and the early spring uh, for the beaches. Uh, following that, we'll also deal with the other risks that, are, uh, that plovers are exposed to. We've been dealing with things like uh, uh, kites and uh, fireworks, and so all of those are going to be uh, dealt with. But we've already discussed those, uh, so we have a pretty good sense of where we're going, at least I do, on, on most all of those. Uh, we then have properties that are public properties that are away from the beach, for which uh, 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 dog access would be recognized off-leash dog access being the principal issue that's involved here. Because most of our parks, I think virtually all of our parks, and our land trust properties already permit dogs uh, uh, pretty free reign on all those properties. And so we expect that we'll be addressing those issues. So we have uh, those to remain. But I think those are going to go pretty fast. So I, I don't think they're going to be a holdup. So that's, uh, that's what's in front of us. But I think a number of them are going to proceed in pretty rapid fashion. And we'll probably get you know, uh, a, a, a very strong consensus out of this group on most all of those issues, it would be my expectation. Great. And on a side note, um, Tom, something too that we might want to think about is I would be interested in some of that literature on um, the fireworks issue. Um, that's something that has I'm starting to get because of the ordinance. <coughs> some, some questions about that. Um, and how that plays into 
stuff that's happening on the beach. So at some point it would be good to maybe possibly discuss that further with mm -hmm. um, and, and get your input because I think mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of that feedback on it and I think that we can apply that probably to some other places. I appreciate that's the really explanation. Nice. Thank you. I've been thinking. I was talking. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking. <laughs> Although I, I will say of of the seven members on that committee, on the ad hoc committee, I have only heard from one member that there were feelings of overwhelmed as far as time timetable. Um, not that they were scared of the work or, or, or shirking the duties of it, but there were some feelings of being overwhelmed. It was a lot of paperwork and, and whatnot. Um, so we're going to make a motion to amend. And here's my thought. My motion would be to move the deadline to, I'm looking at my calendar, sorry. Second meeting would be the 19th, mm -hmm. and you need couple of days for the agenda stuff, so I would move it to February 12th. That's an additional week uh, onto what you have. And my thought behind this was not that I'm, you know, well, that's my motion. Let me put it out there first. And then I'd I'll like to second, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion to second. Second. Discussion. My thought is behind this that you could put perhaps a couple more days in between those. I know you're saying your goal was for three more meetings, mm -hmm. maybe a handful more days in between those meetings um, to allow for committee members to digest their materials a, a little bit more. Um, but that would put us still back to my you know, original, that's two weeks into February, that still allows for the other segment, which is why it is a condensed process. Um, no matter how you slice it, and I, I go back to this, whether we have to have our due process on our end if we move forward with something. Whatever the something is is irrelevant, but there's a due process for us and a timetable, so that still gives us our window for our first reading public hearing, but gives them a little more time to breathe in between their meetings. Um, so that would allow for two more, a total of two more weeks. Um, so that's, that's yeah, it. I have to agree. Councilor Donovan. A lot of times you're uh, able to accomplish your goal because you set a strict deadline uh, and you work towards it and you make it work. Uh, I would say in this case that's probably going to be the case that we will have fully debated all of these issues. But not to say that much is lost by uh, extending it to the 15th, the 12th of February. Yes. My thought is we're not going to cancel meetings that are scheduled. We're going to continue to pursue this right. in a way that uh, uh, seeks to wrap up the matter by January uh, the 29th. Uh, I think that uh, people have been working towards that exceedingly hard and have that expectation. Whether the date is set as the 29th or February 12th, I think we'll still work towards the 29th, but it will certainly save us the need to come back and request an extension uh, beyond the 29th. In right. the event we need a wrap-up meeting, I'd appreciate Tom's uh, thoughts on uh, on that. I, I certainly serve at the pleasure of the, the group. We do have three meetings scheduled, but I, I didn't kind of pose later dates. I didn't want to um, project out that much further. We could, but again, I'll, I think it's the committee that needs to direct uh, that in, uh, in that regard. What we could do, should the work get wrapped up with some time at the back end before this uh, February 12th date, uh, there's some drafting time in terms of preparing the materials and report. Mm -hmm. Uh, and w if we have time, maybe even drafting some ordinance amendment language, uh, mm -hmm. which will speed up the process with council. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've had a fear all along that our report will be fairly uh, simple and direct, just in terms of time, but this may give us time to flush that out a bit further and have the committee certainly have input and review and approve that before it comes to the council. Council Katarina. 
I know I've said this before. I'm a former high school teacher, so I'm usually pretty strict on when papers are due. Um, that being said, I mean, I can understand, you know, when you have a deadline that you work very hard towards that and attempt to meet it. And I've certainly seen more than a good faith effort from this committee to do the right thing. Uh, I would favor moving the deadline to February 12th for all of the um, um, uh, arguments that have been put forth here rather than having to go back to the well again to say, oh, can we move it again, can we move it again? I'd rather keep it at February 12th and then really hold to that February 12th for the very reason that um, otherwise people keep asking for extensions. But I do think there's a lot more. It's a very involved um, discussion. Um, not only are we talking about the beaches, but we've, as a council, have asked this ad hoc committee to really look at the big picture. Uh, and I know the uh, whole plover protection is, a, is probably the most contentious portion of it, uh, and the beach, beach access and whatnot, but there is another whole piece to it. So I, I would definitely be in favor of moving to February 12th. I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, Council Blaze. Um, I'd just like to understand what the significance of January 29th is. We had uh, set up three additional meetings with the expectation that we would be able to uh, cover the balance of the ground. Uh, Mr. Hall's point about uh, uh, leaving some time for drafting is quite appropriate because that will take some time. He has managed all of the staff requirements as well as facilitator requirements, so this has been placed a burden on our town manager and he's done a really uh, a superior job, uh, if you've seen how he's handled uh, a rather intense subject. So, uh, leave a, and some of the drafting, obviously, is going to fall to him again, uh, as far as putting uh, a draft together. Uh, and as a consequence, I think the 12th provides us with ample time to do a, uh, a truly thorough job. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a, a prudent uh, amendment, and I support it. Excellent. So we're not going to bring this. See, I was, I was kind of under the impression that we were going to bring this forward to the council at the first meeting in February. Initially, yeah, initially. Okay. I, I so we're going to move, we're going to move that out when one, mm -hmm. one council meeting. Okay. Correct. I didn't even think, like, that. Councillor Holbrook's point of, you know, my thought was just of trying to get all the meetings in and the information, but she has a really good point of the, the, the amount of literature that goes along with this is, mm -hmm. is overwhelming, and I've only, I only get a portion of it. Um, so I, I would think that it would be helpful to have them have more time to absorb it, um, find wait, find things to back it up with, and so I, I think that's a, that's a huge point. I just, yeah, I don't want to see this rush. Yeah, um, I was just going to mention, <clears throat> if, we, if we weren't for, if we weren't going to uh, put this amendment in, I had perfect faith in uh, Manager Hall and Councilor Donovan to tell us, yeah. and uh, come back to us and tell us that they uh, needed more time, which would be all right, but the, um, like it was said, this this will cover it um, for now. Um, oh, I I uh, to respond to uh, Councillor Blaze's oh, uh, question. Yep. Uh, I would expect we plan to work as uh, rapidly as we can to wrap this matter up uh, because it has involved a tremendous amount of intense effort by uh, quite a number of people, and so. If we were to conclude it before the first meeting in February, we would be delighted to be able to present the report at that time. Perfect. Okay. Any more comments, questions? Last time. Okay. The, we have a uh, we have to vote on the mo we have a motion to amend. And uh, you want to read that? How about going to read? It was motioned by Councilor Holbrook, Holbrook, seconded by St. Uh, Council St. Clair to move the deadline from January 29th to February 12th. 
Okay, so right. first we're going to vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? All opposed? Okay. Now we go back to order number 1407, which has, uh, has a second. Amended. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. As amended. Motion is amended. All those in favor? Opposed? None. All right. Next on the agenda, I will start with uh, standing and special committee reports. Councilor St. Clair. Uh, I just want to say that Susan Winch of the of the Scarborough Public Library. 34 years she's been with the Scarborough Public Library, which is just amazing to me. Um, she's retiring. So they're having um, a get-together for her at the library. Um, I have the contact information if anybody's interested in going. Um, it's, it's pretty neat to actually read all the things that she's done for the library and, and worked on and um, been involved in. Um, grant funding, public pro, I mean, it's just, it's pretty amazing what she's done. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, we mentioned that. They have their um, board meeting tomorrow night. I'm going to try to get to that. Um, but there is a reception for her on January 27th. So it's kind of neat. Um, 34 years in the library for the town of Scarborough, which is hmm. very cool. Uh, the Scarborough, the Winterfest has been moved. I'm not sure if everybody saw that, but it's been warm here, <laughs> which is bizarre. Um, and everything's melting. So hopefully in a couple weeks that was moved. I think it's the 25th, 25th correct? Yeah. Saturday the 25th. So um, it's usually an incredible event. Um, great community services worked really hard on that um, and usually has a really good turnout. So I would encourage people to bring your kids to that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's it for me for tonight. Councilor Blaze. Uh, there haven't been any committee meetings since the last meeting, so no report. Council Benefit? First of all, I apologize for being late. I had a bit of an emergency, which is taken care of. Um, the council, the committees that I'm on have not had meetings uh, except for the commercial coastal waters and there will be another meeting of them next month and I'll have to speak with Chairman Sullivan as to policies <coughs> and rules committee if we already need a meeting we'll have one. Thank you. Right. Councillor Holbrook. She's yeah. not there. I thought she just leaned back. Oh, <laughs> we'll stop this way then. Come for the Katrina. Yeah. Anything to report? Yeah, uh, Conservation Commission, we're working on uh, marsh migration projects, uh, which in essence, it doesn't mean the marsh is moving anywhere, like migrating like the birds, but um, over time, uh, the boundaries of the marsh are going to change, and the levels of the marsh, the water, whatever, the contours of the marsh will be changing. And we've had some uh, state work on that. And what we're talking about now is how we can work with relevant town committees on impacts to infrastructure and zoning and whatever. Also, Long Range Planning Committee uh, met and we discussed, um, we took away a contract zone off of Bigford Street. Um, we did um, municipal capacity site law review work and looking at a Gorham Road Development District, which is right next door to my house, actually. Um, so I'm looking forward to working uh, with that committee <coughs> further. That's it for me. Councilor Donovan. Uh, we've already had some comments on the ad hoc committee, but I will tell you that uh, uh, it's a seven-member committee. Uh, only one person on the committee is expressing the uh, uh, feelings of being rushed uh, I personally feel that when you have an intense subject, uh, 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 delay and procrastination uh, are far more harmful than the intense effort you need to put in to uh, uh, address the issue. Uh, I think the town would be very proud of the effort that has been put in by the committee members. 
uh, it's really been stellar because there's been a substantial amount of material uh, that has to have been reviewed, some of it very technical and scientific, uh, uh, which a number of people, very qualified people on the committee have put forward, uh, and it's been the subject of some discussion. Uh, for myself, uh, there is also a public uh, link on our town website now, uh, which affords members of the t uh, public to access materials uh, to put their two cents in if they want to uh, send uh, comments that are shared with the committee members. And we've also set up a bit of a library system in Mr. Hall's office so that all the materials that we see are also available to the public. Uh, and I would really encourage people to review it because when you do, you have your eyes opened as to what the nature of the problems are that we're addressing, and you start to understand why there is a problem here. So uh, uh, I, would, uh, I would encourage uh, the community to do, to do that. For myself, uh, I will tell you that my goal is uh, to assure the town is in conformance with the law while respecting the rights of dog owners and non-dog owners, uh, and which is to say all the people in, in our town. And that's not an easy task under these circumstances, but it's the one we're charged with. Uh, it's the one we're going to uh, produce uh, a good result, and I have every expectation that when we're done, the town's going to say, now that is an excellent proposal for a town-wide management of uh, the dog ordinance. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to wrapping the matter up. I think uh, we're on the right track and we're making progress. Thank you, Councilor Holbrook. <clears throat> um, real quick, we do have a couple of names from the Appointments Committee who met this evening. Uh, I will note that um, as I'm posting these names, I did recuse myself. Um, I have a conflict. One of the appointments is for the uh, Shoffice Conservation Commission, and my father is on that committee, so I did recuse myself and, and did not vote. Um, but uh, the appointments would like to, however, nominate um, Terry Toomey, Robert Roulette, and um, David Green as a, uh, and move David Green from a first alternate to a full voting member. Um, there's that. And <clears throat> Housing Alliance um, did not actually get a chance to meet earlier in the month like, at their regular date and time, so they will be meeting Thursday, January 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Um, and I'm sure um, I expect to hear an update about um, Habitat and, and how that's going to move forward. Um, we are on the deadline for the uh, community meet community development block grant, <clears throat> so we will need to either move forward with the project this summer or um, consider some, some alternatives. Um, historic Preservation will be meeting February 4th at 6.30. Uh, coming to you probably for the second meeting in February, um, popular date, will be a culmination of their research, which is the first phase, which was identifying what's even left for historic properties and buildings in town. Um, so what you will be receiving at that meeting will be the short list of, of what's here, what's, what's significant, what's you know, fairly endangered of losing, um, and then they'll be soliciting feedback from us as to where we would like to go with these things. Um, from a council perspective, if we are interested in, you know, trying to reach out to homeowners, um, if we want to create programs, if we want to look at, you know, if we have some some kind of an ordinance or whatnot. Um, so again, they'll be soliciting some feedback from you guys. And there's something else, but I forgot, so I'll wait till next time. <laughs> Finance next Tuesday. Oh yes, yeah, yeah that, that was it. Finance, we'll have it. <laughs> first <laughs> meeting next Tuesday. Uh, and we should have uh, year-to-date information where, where we are. So, um, and we'll have, I think we'll have a schedule for our upcoming um, meeting schedule. That's when we start to meet on a weekly basis to go through the budget. 
Okay. Um, as far as uh, the, I was unable to attend last night. Transportation Committee did meet last night. Um, they are nearly complete their work looking at a host of different recommended changes and improvements to pedestrian safety at the Oak Hill intersection, which was their chief or, or first task that's been given to them. Uh, the final piece involves uh, understanding the high crash uh, locations approximate to that intersection. And not surprisingly, that those are a bit delicate in that it potentially affects business and property owners in terms of correcting those situations. So we're working through that. I know the committee would very much like to uh, provide a, an update to the, the council in person, uh, and I'll work with uh, Council Chair mm -hmm. Sullivan to do that sometime as soon as your schedule allows. But they're very close. Uh, it's equally important, I think, to bring this package of changes should the council be interested in moving mm. forward with one or many. Uh, it would dovetail nicely with the budget process. So we'll right. make sure we do it before budget's done. Okay, and that okay. will dovetail right into okay. your report. Yes, a couple of quick uh, items on uh, from my report tonight. Um, Project Grace, who's a uh, long time been our partner with Fuel Assistance Program, they do many, many great things in this community, one of which is the Fuel Assistance Program. Uh, the partnership is essentially we've done um, some of the fundraising, if you will, and beating of the bushes and um, financial management, uh, whereas they have done more of the fuel assistance, meeting with clients, and allocating resources. And I'm very comfortable with those roles. Uh, we really have not uh, formally kickstarted the program this year in terms of the town's involvement. They, however, have been quite involved and continue to meet with clients and provide assistance. Uh, we are obviously in the middle of heating season and they, they would like to come and address council and are looking for a, a similar partnership going forward. So administratively, all the systems are in place. Uh, mm -hmm. Work with Steffi Cox, the director of Project Grace, and perhaps have her at your next meeting just for a two or three or five minute update on the project. Mm -hmm. uh, town website, I'm pleased to announce after about a year in process, we'll be going live with a brand new uh, website, total new look. Um, very much enhanced functionality. Uh, for those that have spent any time on our website, there's a ton of content, but it's very poorly designed and hard to find. Mm -hmm. I'd be the first to admit. Uh, I think you'll find this is, uh, is much better designed and, and much better uh, to find the information. We're, uh, we have a, a go live date of February 10th, and as part of this, we're also going to adopt a new URL. Um, right now, our website has, it's kind of a mouthful. It's not something that rolls off your tongue or comes immediately to mind. So we'll be going with www.scarboroughmain.org. We think that will be a lot easier for people to understand. Um, and as soon as the site is ready for inspection, I'll provide a link to you all and you can get an inside peek. But uh, you'll see some publicity we'll do in the press and such um, around early February. Also, uh, workers' comp savings. Uh, every year we get a rundown of the savings we get through our uh, affiliation with the main work, uh, main municipal workers comp um, trust, and this year we received a dividend just over uh, $28,000. Mm -hmm. We also received a $2,000 grant, uh, reductions of about $18,000, and uh, as a result of our safety programs, and also they provide loss control services that they assign a dollar value to. All told, it's o over $52,000 in savings on our workers comp costs. So. Um, I mention that because it's a lot of money, and I assure you it's, uh, it's, re it's directly related to dedication on the part of my staff to be committed to safety. It's not something that's easy. It's something um, we're trying to make it a matter of routine and customary, uh, but it takes commitment, and uh, I have departments doing tremendous work in that regard, and this is how it pays off. Uh, lastly, EcoMaine every year has all their member communities uh, able to nominate an individual business or group in our community uh, for their commitment to environmental <laughs> sustainability. It's totally self-generated. Uh, the nomination forms are out. It's a quick turnaround. Uh, they're due by January 24th, so I mentioned that to the council and to anyone else. If there's an individual group or business uh, that you feel is committed to environmental sustainability, get in touch with me and I'll be pleased to help put an application together. And that's it. As was mentioned, Winterfest has is, is, uh, been postponed to the 25th, rain date of the 26th, and the forecast looks as though we might get a little snow, so let's hope for that. Thank you.
Council member comments. <clears throat> Council St. Clair. Uh, I just want to say <coughs> we're still, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but myself is still getting a large number of um, emails pertaining to the dogs um, on the beach issue. And I, I just want people to understand that at this point, personally, I don't feel like I want to weigh in on that until after the committee comes back um, with their recommendations. I think we have to um, let them do the job that they've been assigned without having to feel um, any additional pressure from myself. Um, I know we're all anxious to get those recommendations so that we can move forward. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this town, um, and rightfully so, we're spending a large amount of time on this issue. Um, but there are other things that definitely require our attention, uh, especially with the budget coming up. Um, we are all assigned a, a large amount of um, subcommittees, and a lot of those committees have a lot of things going on. So um, there's a lot of good things going on in this town. Um, I know that the dog issue has been a contentious issue for a lot of people. Um, I do believe that we're moving in the right direction with that. I know um, everybody that's on that committee um, is working extremely hard to try to come up with um, a resolution that's um, fair for everybody in Scarborough, um, all sides of the issue. Um, so I hope that you know that process can be respected and, and we can let them do the job that they need to be doing. Um, and I am very much looking forward to um, the recommendation from that group. Councilor Blaze. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, uh, Chairman Sullivan and Councillor Katarina for going up to Augusta and fighting our battle. I thought the meeting <clears throat> last week with the legislative delegation was a very good meeting. They, I think they heard what we were saying and they told us their story, but you know, we'll have to see what happens. But a lot of a lot has got to be done at the state level because everything that goes on at the state level at this point in time is starting to affect us. And we can't afford astronomical increases in our property taxes anymore. Enough is enough. Thank you. Council Benedict. Uh, I'd just like to address the dog situation because, like all the other councilors, I've gotten a ton of mail pro and con, believe it or not, <coughs> and for those that are not familiar with the computer, I don't need capitalization and bold plus five or how I don't even know how you do it, and italics and different colors and blockage, and you have a message, you have a question, just ask it. As far as uh, replying to them, if you want to reply or need a reply, that's fine. Otherwise, I believe that we've got a committee in, in place that is fine. Uh, and one thing I learned in business years ago, and you might disagree with it, but I don't think we all need to micromanage what the ad hoc committee is doing. Helping them is fine. Cutting them down is not. Uh, and I don't understand why everybody thinks the, the, the deck is stacked. There's four, four the, against the dogs. For, I mean, it, it almost looks like for, for a town that doesn't like the lottery, they try to figure out the numbers, none of which do I find accurate. I think there's about there's one on there that I would... That, that for there's nobody I bet against or speak for, and I think we should keep that in reverence because it's getting getting to be a little out of hand. It's the almost the exact every email is about eighty percent the same, and I would assume from the address bar that's giving larger and larger, there's a lot of people that read it or don't. And I'd just like to keep it 
in line and let the committee do their job. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Councilor Katarina. Yes, thank you. Um, I know I told a lot of people that I will be available to meet with folks, and I'm setting up my first open office hours on Saturday, January 25th from 9.30 to 11 a.m., and I will be down to the Engine 1 at Black Point because I do want to get out around in the various neighborhoods, and I'm going to start with the Fire Department, Engine 1, Black Point. Please bring your thoughts, concerns, ideas, and your kids or grandkids because I've talked to the staff down there of making sure we have folks to show off the fire trucks and whatever else kids would like to see. So uh, please come down uh, again Saturday, January 25th. I'll be there at 9.30 from 9.30 to 11. Um, and I want to thank in particular Chairman Sullivan. He did a lot of work on that long draft I read today, he and uh, Tom Hall. Um, so thank you for doing that, putting that together uh, for to bring up to the legislature. Uh, I want to continue to thank everyone who's giving their time to serve on the ad hoc committee um, and those p interested citizens who are involved. And I do get a lot of emails, and I have to admit I'm one of those people I feel like I should at least answer and say I got your email. So I apologize if I've missed any, um, but at least I will get back to you and say I got your email. Thank you very much, um, and please know I am reading them. Um, but again, you know, it is. I, I'm looking forward to uh, letting the ad hoc committee do their do their work. Uh, and Tom sort of stole this, but that's okay. I was going to mention about remember your neighbors. Project Grace right now is collecting money uh, for heating assistance for folks. Uh, the situation is pretty dire, as you can well imagine, with the recent very very cold weather that we had. Um, I don't know about you, but my furnace was running overtime and ate a lot of oil. And there are people in this town for whom fuel assistance is essential. They're choosing between fuel and food, and I'm not kidding. So please keep that in mind. Uh, I've actually had uh, uh, a couple of uh, meetings that were, were pretty exciting in matters that uh, I have a real interest in, uh, and I really enjoyed attending them. Uh, uh, Tom and I <coughs> uh, participated in the Energy Committee uh, meeting this past week, and I went to my first one a couple of weeks ago, just starting to get to know the people. Uh, there's a very high uh, professional knowledge of energy issues on this committee. So from a community uh, a contribution point of view, this is a really good group. Uh, we are, uh, and again, Judy Roy is on that group, again, contributing. So, uh, you know, uh, my hat goes off to her public service. Uh, uh, we're dealing with an issue, and, and Tom can tell you a great deal more about it than I, but uh, that uh, a solar panel issue on uh, some of our public buildings. <clears throat> and the reason those never go anywhere is because there's no tax credit for a municipality. But uh, in recent years, there have been developed some plans that uh, allow for uh, some imaginative ways for investors to lease solar panel projects to towns so that they can get discounted pricing on their electricity and then buy at a bargain purchase the equipment once the tax credit runs out. Uh, uh, we're moving it forward. Uh, Tom's working on it, uh, has a good handle on it, as does the committee. Uh, we met with some people who are making this proposal. It is unique. It's innovative. It's kind of exciting because it, it means where, when you get the power, you're off the grid. That's, you're, no, you're no longer uh, having to buy electricity. You're buying it from yourself. So th that, that project, we also held the meeting at the DPW building. And I tell you, the more time I spend with mm -hmm. Mike Shaw, the more I am impressed by this gentleman's control of his, his department. Uh, they are pursuing some economies. We, we did a, uh, a tour to look at energy economies and efficiencies. And, and you go through, and they are really on top of it. I, uh, uh, I had made a, a goal of, of pursuing that sort of issue. And I was just uh, very impressed, in awe, really, of, of how sophisticated they are. 
The other thing I did this week was I attended with Tom again, as well as Dan Bacon, the Director of uh, Planning, and Brian Longstaff, our new Code Enforcement Officer, the uh, uh, flood uh, map conference held by FEMA mm -hmm. in Portland. Uh, and there are a lot of people who are very interested in this because this is, it's a complicated process. It's got more questions than answers at this point. Uh, the thing that I think I can assure people is there are going to be public hearings uh, so that people can have their questions answered. Uh, I understand the process well enough uh, to be dangerous uh, and, uh, and will be happy to try and assist our town officials who are really going to take the lead, but obviously it's nice to be able to talk to somebody who maybe would, you know, be available to spend a half an hour on the line talking to you about flood management issues. So uh, that was another one that was, uh, was pretty good. And lastly, uh, Scarborough Leaders Person of the Year, Ron Forrest. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my first contacts just seven or eight years ago when we moved here was putting in a new fence, and he came out, and it was a pleasure to meet that gentleman. So I just wanted to give him my congratulations. Can I just dovetail on Bill? I, I failed to mention uh, the, the, the <coughs> meeting that we attended, um, the PowerPoint, which contains a lot of the details of process and dates, uh, we do have and it's available on our website. So I encourage folks to, to take a peek at that and that will at least give you a sense of where we're going over the next several months. Council Holbrook. Yes. Um, so I do have um, the unfortunate list if you will. Um, so uh, as standard practice, we like to offer our condolences to the families of those um, that have since left us. And um, tonight we actually have um, one that stands out. Clarence Alquist passed away. As many of you may know, that is our former vice chair, uh, former chair's father, Ronald Alquist. Um, some background on Clarence is that he um, was a resident of the Maine Veterans Home and he did serve in um, World War II as did my grandmother and all of the siblings. Um, he was actually a reserve um, PD officer here in Scarborough for a while. Um, he worked for the Scarborough School Department through the maintenance department and um, kind of a fun fact, although like many of the family he was a hunter and, and went, you know, and went looking for deer and all those fun things. He was 89 years old when he shot his first moose. <laughs> um, so that's kind of a fun thing. Um, of course, the other um, fairly common name that you might recognize is Faye Merrill, also mm -hmm. Faye Moulton. Um, she worked for a long time for the Scarborough School Department. Um, she was a member of the Pythian Sisters, um, Eastern Star, and, and Scarborough Grange, and is a um, was the mother of our police chief, Robert Moulton. Um, we also have on the list um, our condolences for the families of the following, which is Dale John Blackie Jr., Robert Braley, Barbara Chiazzo, Edward Francis Cogswell, John Dickman, Richard Fisk, Fred Flaherty, who um, oh. is also a townie. He um, was a lobsterman for a long time down at Pine Point. Um, again, he was one of our war veterans. He served in the U.S. Navy for um, World War II and the Korean conflict. Um, Robert Lindquist, Janet Michoud, Barbara Morin, Martin Nappy, Janet Nichols, Deborah Palmer, who was also actually, um, that was a lifetime Scarborough resident as well, um, William Nan Nathaniel Rhodes, Beverly Grafton Slout, and Donald Witten, who is actually was also a, a Scarborough lifetime resident um, who served in the armed forces as well as very active in the American Legion and over at Fishing Game. Um, so again, um, send our condolences out um, to the families of, of those that have passed. Um, I guess I will chime in on, um, of course, as always, dogs is kind of pertinent lately. Um, I did write a reply. Um, I, I did receive the email um, asking questions. Um, I could not quite write them fast enough, um, but asking each individual counselor in there to um, 
answer a series of questions. Um, like I said, I, I did form a reply. I, I won't read it all, but um, as far as the quick list goes, um, for myself, I, again, I can only speak for myself as a counselor, but um, when we had our workshop meeting, um, I was clear at the time and understood that for myself that we were going to task the town manager with setting up the duties and, and you know different things, and that we were putting it more upon him to pick, you know, some names and putting some faith and trust into him on having a diverse group. Um, as far as whether I felt I had opportunity to vet that, I feel that the time for me to do so, if I had a question or concern about the names that we've added to this committee was at the time of our last council meeting that I was acting chair. If I felt that these people were inappropriate or would be biased or in any other form, I would have said so at the time. Um, certainly for myself, I felt that um, although it was not, to me, I did not look at this as a stack community in either direction. This isn't just about beaches or just about fish and wildlife. It is a bigger, fuller, more whole package. And so I was not interested in having solely just the fish and wildlife folks on that committee. I liked that there was somebody who, um, I'm going to throw Glenna Chabot under the bus. She's had a lot of experience with outreach education. She was very active down in Higgins Beach because it's outreach across the town that I'm interested in, not just the beaches and the bluebirds. I liked that there was a biologist. Um, I like that this is, again, this is a whole dogs package issue for me. Um, so five of the seven members are dog owners. Um, and certainly we had a new counselor um, who was not part of the proceeding beforehand um, and certainly brings a legal background and understand of working knowledge of legalese and all those little things like may and shall that changes how an ordinance, you know, is can be enforced. So. I'm certainly comfortable with the folks. Um, again, if I had an issue, I would have said so at the time of the meeting. As far as if I feel, you know, if this is um, some kind of a charade, I don't. I truly look forward to seeing what this committee has to say. I'm looking for um, a multitude of answers from them um, across the board um, as to, uh, I'm trying to go through this list, sorry, so give me a second. Um, as far as a counselor meeting privately with a committee member, I don't have an issue with that. And, you know, I meet with a lot of people on a regular basis. Um, it's realistically an accusation that I, I can't answer to because that counselor is not me. So I, I can only speak for myself. Um, but again, I certainly have no hesitation or, you know, reason that I wouldn't meet with an individual of this community. There are a multitude of issues, especially money. So depending on what your committee assignments might be that year, you might have lots of meetings with lots of different folks. Um, and I guess, well, you know, to wrap it up as far as revisiting this issue, um, and I did say this in my return email, um, revisiting the dogs issue, um, I'm going to go back to the heart and the crux of it, which was, a town-wide leash ban failed at voter referendum. And for me, that's the point of this committee. I, I would like to hear from them just like I do with a multitude of things. You know, I have been on finance for a couple of years. Certainly budgets fail at referendum. Our brand new intermediate school that we're building failed twice in this community. We didn't just walk away and say, we're not going to build a new school. It comes back. It might be different in the package. It goes back out again, but it comes back and it still has to get dealt with. It does, you know, just like the school, it didn't change the fact that the roof was falling down and there's asbestos and there's mold. And we didn't just walk away and say, we're not going to fix it. We tweaked it, changed it, sent it back out. Um, I view the work of this committee no different. I look forward to it. Um, and I hope that you come with some wonderful, well-accepted recommendations. <laughs> That's it for me. Okay. Um, I'd like to send my condolences out to everybody that was on um, Councilor Holbrook's list. Um, and the two that I know the best would be the Alquist family and the Moulton family. Um, 
my uh, condolences go out to them. As far as um, the um, the issues that uh, Council Holbrook touched on, as the chair and the vice chair, um, we had very little to do um, with the committee. Um, I didn't. I did not vet committee members. Uh, Councillor Holbrook didn't vet. Uh, committee members. And like I've said in my emails, if any councillor did vet uh, members of the committee, I was unaware of that. Um, <clears throat> to say that a, um, that a councillor and a committee member are meeting with each other, um, I'm the liaison to the Transportation Committee. I vote on the Transportation Committee also. Mm -hmm. I uh, meet with members of the Transportation Committee. So I, I really don't see the difference in the two like that. I'm sure that there's um, members of that committee that meet with each other also on the outside. And I do find it a little disturbing that it's known that a councillor and a committee member have met eight times. That tells me somebody's watching these people. Um, the committee members or the councillor. So I find that a little disturbing. But I think what we need to do is we need to give time for the committee. Um, we've extended the time. The committee to do its work and bring its recommendations to the council. Then we'll know which direction the council will go in. Whether to accept some or maybe none of the recommendations. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, but it's when it comes right down to it, it's the committee of the council, and the council decides on whether to set, accept or not to accept, or what parts they do. And I think I'll leave my comments at that point tonight and uh, call for a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed?